What up y'all and welcome to the Wizard's Forge. In this video we'll be covering how to create a new head preset in the character creator. The creator kit already has a bunch of game ready models making this a great mod for beginners and it'll also give the option to import your own skeletal mesh for those who want to use their completely own. In this video first we're going to create a new empty mod and then we'll navigate to the creator kit's built in character creator. From there we'll create a new avatar head style preset, and then we'll go over the data tables and data assets that the creator kit automatically adds. And then we'll finish off this video by testing that our head style works in game, and then uploading our mod to CurseForge. To create our new head style mod, first we're going to create a new empty mod. So at the top we'll select create mod, we'll select a new empty mod, and we'll call this mod new avatar head style mod. Now this is going to be the name of your mod plugin. This is going to be how your mod is referenced in the creator kit. You'll have the option to rename your mod when you upload it to show how you want it to look in game. Once you have everything filled out, we'll select this create mod button to create our mod. Next, we're going to open the character creator. So first, we're going to click this view option button down at the bottom right. And we're going to make sure show plugin content is enabled. Once that's verified, we're going to click this folder and navigate to the customizable character content folder. From there we'll click that and we'll double click this character creator level. While that's loading, let's consult our sacred text. This wizard forge Bible is going to be a list of commandments based on mistakes that I made so you don't have to. The first commandment, thou shalt always check what mod you have selected before opening the character creator. When you make a change in the character creator, it'll automatically send that edit to the mod folder of the selected mod. Now this makes creating avatar presets in the character creator a lot easier, but can also lead to some issues if you have the wrong mod selected when you make a change. Commandment 2. Thou shalt make sure that no assets from other mods folders are included or referenced in your current mod. After you upload your mod, only the content in your mods folder or the base creator kit will be cooked. If your mod has references to other mods folders, when you upload it it won't cook correctly, causing it to be rejected. While we create our head style mod, we'll look out for common places this can happen and how to fix it if it does. Now once that level's finished loading, we'll select the play button to play the character creator. And now I'm going to press the F11 key to enter full screen mode, just to make things a little easier to see. From here, we'll select this editor mode in the top left corner and switch it to avatar preset. If you'd like, you could change the lighting by selecting scene up on top and changing the scene. Now, an important thing about the character creator is that the male and female presets are separate. So if you make any changes on this page, it'll only apply to the male character. Then you'll have to select this gender option to switch to the female character to make changes to the female avatar. To create a new head option, select your desired gender and scroll down to the head style option. Now if we select the head button, we can see that the character creator comes with a lot of different head options that were not in the original game. Now not all of these work great for the avatar, but it gives you a lot of different options you can choose from to further customize your character. For this tutorial, we're going to be selecting this B underscore AM underscore head underscore ZF option. Now, to create our head style, we'll select this plus button right here to create a new head style preset. From here, we'll give it a name of Wizards Forge Mods underscore head style underscore 01, and then we'll put underscore M and select OK. Then make sure to press the Save Preset button to save your changes. Now if you look at your mods folder, you'll see that the Creator Kit added a couple assets. This will automatically give you everything you need to see this new head option in game. Now let's test and see how our new head option looks in game. To access the Character Creator, I open the Root Level located at Content, Levels, and Root Level. Then I pressed F11 to enter full screen and we'll start the game. Up here we'll select a male avatar preset and then scroll over to our baseware options. Then if we see at the bottom, we'll have a new option with this red debug icon 
If we click on that, we'll see the new face that we just created. From here, you could upload your mod and you could see this functioning in game. Next up, we'll go over those assets that were added to your mods folder and how to switch out this skeletal mesh with one of your own. If you're using a head model from the creator kit and this doesn't interest you, feel free to skip to the creating a UI icon section of the video. I'll have a timestamp in the description below. Now we'll navigate to our mods folder and we'll select data, avatar presets, and head style. Then if we double click our data asset, we'll see a bunch of values that define our head style. Now let's answer the question, what is a data asset? When we import our head model, all the creator kit knows is that we imported a skeletal mesh. We can then use data tables to tell the creator kit what type of asset it is and who should be able to use it. When we first create a data asset, we'll have the option to choose what kind of asset type it is. This data asset is of type character piece, which is going to give these options to further define what type of piece this item is. So if we go from the top down, we'll see that we have the character classification of a human and the character piece type of head. So we've told the game that this asset is going to be a head for a human. Then we'll select what gender should be able to use this head. Next we have the default mesh. This is going to determine what skeletal mesh should be used for this head asset. And then finally we have the facial pose asset, which will be what kind of facial animation pose asset this skeletal mesh should use. This next section will show how to create your own data asset, but no need to follow along as we're just gonna duplicate this one and copy it into our mod folder. To create a new data asset, first we're gonna right click into our mod folder. From there, we'll search miscellaneous, and then we'll select data asset. From here, you'll search character piece, and then hit select to create a data asset of type character piece. From there, we're gonna follow the naming convention of the earlier example. So we're gonna put DA for data asset, underscore NPC, underscore wizards forge mod. And then we'll hit enter to create our data asset. This will create an empty character piece data asset that we can then further define with whatever we want. Now that we know how to create a data asset, We'll delete this one and then grab the one we want. So we'll click this, hit delete, and delete. In our mods folder, I'm going to double click this data asset. From there, I'm going to find this character piece data asset it's referencing and select this search button to navigate to it in the content browser. From there, I'm going to right click this data asset and select copy reference. Once we've copied that reference, we can hit this back key to navigate back to our mods folder. Then to click anywhere into this content folder, and we'll put control V to paste our asset. Next, we're going to right click on our data asset and select rename. We'll rename this to what we had earlier, DA underscore NPC underscore wizards forge mod, and then hit enter to rename our asset. Now we can double click our data asset and we'll see that we have all the same character piece references as before. If you want to use your own custom head model, you could import that skeletal mesh into that folder and then set it as the default mesh here. And now that we've made a copy of this data asset, we're going to need to set this new copy as the data asset this avatar preset uses by default. To do this, we'll click on this avatar preset data asset. And then when we see character piece, we're going to select our copy and then select this arrow to switch it out. From there, we'll save and we'll have this character piece now referencing our copy. Now this data asset will allow this skeletal mesh to be used by any NPC that is a human and male. In order to see it on the avatar, we'll have to add another data asset. This is going to be the avatar preset data asset that was created automatically when we made our head in the character creator. 
Similar to how the character piece data asset defines how a character piece would be used for an NPC, the avatar preset data asset will define how it'll be used for the avatar. If we look at the top, we see that this is an asset type of avatar preset. If we come to the preset definitions, we see that it's a preset type head style and gender male. And if we go down to the character items, we'll see this is of type head and that it's referencing that character piece data asset that we just created. This data asset tells the game that the new character headpiece we made can be used by the male avatar. Next is to create a data table that'll add this new avatar preset definition to the list of avatar assets that you see in game. This is done in the dt underscore add avatar preset piece definition data table that was automatically created when we made our head in the character creator. Then if we double click on this avatar preset data table, we'll see that there was a new row added to it. There's a couple of important things on this data table to note. The first is going to be the row name. You're going to want this row name to be the same name as your data asset, but without this da in front of it. The creator kit will truncate this first part, the DA, and will search for assets that share the same name that follows it. Next, in the preset type and gender, you want to make sure it's the same as your data asset. And the most important part is going to be this avatar preset definition. You're going to want to make sure this file path only references assets from your mod folder or the base game. In this data asset, we have one row with an avatar preset definition that references our new avatar head style mod folder. If we add any references from any other mod folders, we would need to remove them in order for our mod to cook successfully. And finally, we have the sort order, which is going to be the order this asset is displayed in the avatar creator. So it'll automatically add it to the end by default, but you can change that here. Now, all that's left to do is create a new UI icon for our new head style. We can do this in the character creator, so we'll click this folder button, scroll up to customizable character content, and open the character creator. Once that's loaded, let's make sure our new head style mod is selected, and we'll play the character creator. Go into full screen, go to the editor mode, and set it to avatar preset. Then up at the top, we're going to switch the scene to gear icons. This will help the icon look a little better when we do our screenshot. Next, select the gender you used and then scroll down to the head option. Then you're going to select the head style and set it to your modded head style. So we are wizards forwards mod underscore hairstyle underscore 01 underscore M. This part's optional, but most of the other head styles in game are going to be bald. So if you want that, you can select this hairstyle option and scroll down to the bottom option and select male hairstyle 052. Next, we're going to enter icon edit mode by selecting this icon edit button. From here, make sure your head style is selected and then press save. This will create a new UI icon that will automatically be added to our mods folder. If you navigate back to our mods folder, then we'll see a new content folder has been added. Then if you open this folder, we'll see content, UI, icons, character creator, and then we'll have the new UI icon that was just made. Next, we'll need to link this icon to our head model. We'll do this by creating a new data table of type icon info. Do this, we'll right click the content browser, go to miscellaneous, and then select this top data table option. From here, we'll search icon info. And select OK. And then similar to before, we're going to call this data table then we're going to use the same name as the row name. So control V, wizards, forge mods, underscore head style, underscore 01, underscore M. And then we're going to select enter. Then we're going to open this data table and then add a new row. We're going to call this row wizards, forge mods, underscore head style, underscore 01. Then we're going to select this texture 
and select this to our icon. I'm gonna use this by pressing this arrow key just to automatically put in whatever I have selected. From there, we'll press save, and then we'll just add it to the mod mutator, and then we're done. To access the mod mutator, go to the top of your mod folder, and then select this BP underscore mod mutator. Then if it opens in this condensed view, we can press this open full blueprint editor option. Now this mod mutator is going to take those two data tables we made and add them to the existing data tables already in game. So first, let's make sure class defaults is selected up here. And then we'll expand this data table expansion window. From here, we'll see that the data table created earlier has already been added, so all we need to do is add the one for the icon info. To do this, I'll make this a little smaller. I'm gonna press this plus button next to the data table extensions to create a new option. Then I'll expand this option, then for this additional data to add, this is going to be the icon info data table that we just made. So we'll navigate to content, UI, icons, character creator, and then select this DT underscore wizard forge mods underscore head style underscore M icon info. And then for the tables to add to, we're going to add to the icon table that's already in game. So if we search icon, we'll do this UI underscore DT underscore icons. Then we'll press compile and save. Now all that's left to do is to test and make sure it's working in game. So if we press start to go to the character creator, let's select a different avatar preset, come over to the head option. If we scroll down to the bottom, we'll see this new icon we made, and if we click this, we'll see our new head option. And then to finish off, we'll upload our mod. We'll select this Upload Mod button to bring up the Mod Upload window. We'll make sure our head style mod selected, and then we'll change our name to how we want our mod to look in-game. So we'll call it New Space Avatar Space Head Style and Preset. And probably call this a just to make sure it's unique. Perfect. I'm gonna go down to category and I'll do character mod summary adds a new male head preset. And then in our mod description, we'll put adds a new head preset to the wizard avatar. This head style can be found in the face wear option in the creator kit. Then we'll full screen this and select upload mod. Thanks for watching, that's gonna be it for this video. If you found it helpful, like and subscribe, and let me know what tutorials and videos you'd like to see next. Wizards Forge Mods, out.